Sam and I have, we put together this wall here of uh, rock and up along all of these areas here has been uh, essentially the, the uh, love of, or labor of love that Pam and I have been doing all these years. We've been striving to create a, uh, a place of healing sanctuary. Uh, we want people to come here to you know, feel it, to, uh, to simply be. This past summer we just completed this little grape arbor here. We've been growing the grapes here. Pam and I have planted these um, about eight years ago and we uh, built this uh, little uh, Oh, how on sweet. Here. And how in this sweet. past summer we uh, brought together some of the native willows that uh, grow down on the property and we formed this lattice work with the hope that the uh, grape vines will cover it and it'll provide a nice little shelter place where somebody could have a cup of tea or sit out there in the morning and have How a sweet. You know what's so beautiful about it? You don't realize, or maybe you do, you're creating a place of healing in a yes. place that really yes. needs healing. And that is absolutely, if people only understood, as we stand here in Short Creek, the creek, and you've had the courage to stay here and say, this shall become a place of healing. I, I owe that to Pam and her former husband's vi vision. He died um, ten years ago. This is just and, beautiful. Uh, he was a downwinder. And... Uh, He's actually buried over by that rock that you see over there. Tell our listeners. The downwinders are, are people that were subjected to the good graces of our government uh, during the atomic bomb open air testing. Okay. And uh, Martin was one of those who acquired cancer as a result of that. Okay. And uh, the government realized that they had a responsibility to their guinea pigs that uh, were the residents of uh, Let's Utah, walk over and Nevada, and I think Arizona. Let's walk over and take a picture of, of now, where we are in relationship is, to these beautiful mountains. This is Shark Creek, right down, flowing down through here. Uh, Lewis and Clark called it a stream that wasn't fit to drink. Um, <laughs> and quite honestly, the, uh, that's uh, what they didn't understand is that when we get water from the source, um, it is some of the most high energy water that I've ever experienced in my life. Uh, I, like when I visit my grandkids, um, just in, in the town of St. George, I have to take water because if I don't, I'll be thirsty the whole time I'm visiting them. Right. Because I, I carry water, water from here. Anyhow, up in there that you can see up there, that beautiful uh, canyon is called Skunk Canyon. There, I don't believe there is a formal name for that, what appears to be a peak. Pam and I call it Machu Picchu because of the sense of awe and mystery that is rather pervasive on the property here. It's a... Um, it is a place of peace, uh, a place of serenity, and a lot of times people, as they come up through the town of, of Colorado City, um, they feel the tension, they feel the pain and unspoken anguish that is there, and yet at the same time they come up here and all of a sudden they're struck by this sense of peace that um, is throughout the whole property, and that's one of the things that Pam and I have been consciously working at. Um, this is really beautiful. Thanks. It is. It is beautiful. And there goes one of the robbers that just took some of our pistachios. That little jay. They come here think, oh, you just saw a hawk just made a kill right down there. Wow. Um, I would like them to come and do more of that to take care and help us with what we're trying to do here. Um, we want people to be able to like come and enjoy the pistachios that are growing here. Um, the season comes. Uh, this year we have hardly anything, and the squirrels and the robber jays are getting everything. But uh, you just saw right there that hawk 
decided I needed a meal, and they just took out that little bird and stole the, <laughs> it stole the pistachio. Excuse me for a moment. Hey, Pam, did you see that hawk make the kill? Uh, Robert J. flew off with a pistachio here, and then a hawk just swooped right oh, down. Oh, I didn't see it. And took it. So you took <laughs> that bird? The, the hawk took the Robert J. See? No. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. The Robert J. isn't in his mouth, though. Well, I don't know what he did with it. Oh, gosh. Amazing. Oh. Now, my name is, you know, sorry. Uh, I won't tell. There, there is a real story behind that. Sam's the only person. I think it's so, so serendipitously crazy and wonderful that you have decided to make a healing place in a place so filled with pain, so filled with need, so filled with needing you. Where in the world did you get the courage to do that here? in this place of pain, Short Creek? I, I really couldn't, I really can't take any credit for that because first of all, having grown up as a Mormon, I studied Mormon history and I came to believe that Short Creek was the, pers uh, the persecuted faithful. The, pers the persecuted faithful. The reason I say that is because I had heard about uh, the raid. I had heard about all of the different things. And having studied Mormon history, I, at that time I believed, well, this must be the right thing. And, and then as I came down here and I st started seeing the discrepancy be between what I had read historically and what I um, had heard about, and then what I actually observed in real life practice, I thought, whoa, this is not what I was led to believe. And then having met Pam, um, Pam actually uh, was kind of a the guiding vision of, of creating this place, and when we got together, we just seemed to be uh, in synchronization with this the sense of um, creation, um, the uh, helping helping these uh, plants to grow, helping to nurture all of these things. This is something that both of us had. I had always uh, wanted to live a rural lifestyle, and uh, my uh, life didn't take that turn for almost all of that. I ended up, you know. Um, teaching for a time at, 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 in college and um, not feeling happy about any of it because I was living in, in the midst of cities and never being close in contact with the earth. And then so having met Pam was, uh, like I said, it uh, saved my life and um, because uh, she introduced me to a very powerful retreat of healing that, that was called the awakening. Um, I hadn't, I knew that I was in pain, but I didn't have a, a means of addressing it. I grew up in a highly dysfunctional family, and that's why I coined a phrase a few days ago uh, that to take off on the Mormon, you know, families are forever, and I have to say, if families are forever, there truly is hell. <laughs> because I suffered so much pain in that family that um, I sought out a uh, psychiatrist and talked with him. And he, one day he just said, after we had completed a, uh, a number of sessions, he said, Gordy, I don't recommend this often. He said, but in your case, I'm going to recommend that you have a funeral for your family and... Um, never initiate contact with them again. And I have lived up to that um, for over 20 years, with one exception. That was when a, a sister was in, an, in danger from a, an abusive predator that we both knew in common who was out searching for her again. I, and so I had to warn her. But that's the only time I've ever broken contact or made contact with my former family because of the pain that was there, and um, I have to say that much of that pain could be traced back to their experience within 
um, a their own particular brand of Mormonism. Um, we were mainstream Mormon, but uh, the abuse that went on in, in my family was um, unspeakable, and um, it, and yet the most damnable thing about that was that not everybody in my family experienced abuse, just certain certain ones, and we fit into a um, pattern um, that when I was younger I had auburn hair, and so did my sister. We were the only ones who had auburn hair, and for some reason that was significant. When your father passed away? He, um, People couldn't say enough good words about him. He'd been a former bishop. He'd been in that role. He did uh, remarkably well. He lived up to those edicts of the Mormon Church uh, far beyond anybody that I had ever known. And yet, uh, what was going on in his own home was um, difficult. Well, that's a kind way of putting it. Uh, I had uh, a sister who was raped, and he called her a slut. And uh, my mother, uh, my own grandchildren were not welcomed in there. And um, their only memories of their grandmother was somebody who was sitting essentially in a, an Archie Bunker chi type of chair. Um, and either she was vegged out watching TV, or she was sleeping, or she was sitting there eating. Yeah, and that's that's their only memories of the grandmother was what I had described about <laughs> just being vegged out. And I only have one picture of my parents, and they were in their early 30s, and already my mother was the walking dead. She lived another 40 years, and uh, and it was due to the the, uh, being unable to speak about what was going on, I used to hate her for not defending me, and now I realize that there was no way that she could have. Right. And so her best choice was just to simply succumb and remain quiet, and she remained quiet in an unknown cipher the remainder of her life. I find talking to you, listening to you, so ironic, and here's why. I, too, started out thinking that we polygamists were God's chosen persecuted people. I too had a mother just like yours and a father that could qualify to at least a great deal of what you had said. My mother capitulated and did not protect me and as a child I held it against her. Now I realize that you can't speak out against the Gestapo when you're in the concentration camp. Oh no, oh no. And yeah. uh, that's that's an apt term because uh, my concentration camp was the fact that I got into all of the stories and yet because of what was happening in my life, I believe that I had to atone for my life continually. Every step, everything that I did was never based on what I desired. Um, I desired art and music, and in my family, as my parents put it, the, um, art and music are only for drunks and queers, and um, <laughs> I'm, um, yeah, I got something similar in my family, not exactly the same words, but art it wasn't acceptable. Art me uh, in my life, and yet that had to be hidden. Um, I would secretly go and sculpt something out of um, clay and then destroy it before anybody could see it. Uh, I would hear music in my head and, and of course would never express it, um, nor would I sing. And, uh, so those, those things went on and I did all that I was told that the church had in store for me and that I was to do that. And that's um, because uh, none of it nourished my soul. It was atoning for my life. Uh, and the edicts of that God that I was taught in Mormonism was that I would never measure up. And I was 
as they say, the natural man is an enemy to God and has been from the fall of Adam and will be forever and ever. And on it goes. And I finally came to realize I have never been God's enemy. I am. Um, I am the reason why God keeps allowing this planet to learn and possibly grow because there's hope whenever you can create something and when Pam and I create uh, things on this watching that hawk right there that hawk is just gate just circling you'll see it right behind you right um, to see something like that somebody said life isn't measured by the m number of breaths that you take but it's by the by the number of times your breath is taken away. And I'm in one of those moments right now and watching this, uh, my medicine bird, um, that is acknowledged, what is acknowledging me for what I'm saying today. Um, I, I know it sounds woo woo to a hard headed uh, realist or. I don't think so. But for me, in the native realm, uh, this is highly significant because I am in a place of truth. And. Um, they they have recognized that my my particular medicine bird doing the very act that uh, brought me that name. Um, so anyhow, there's what uh, where I'm at on this. I was just telling her about soaring hawk. It's soaring right there, love. Only we want to do the tour. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay. Uh, just one little thing before okay, I let him out of this ask. camera. I just want to tell you that the fact that you have come back through your pain and held yourself out and are holding yourself out to heal others is not only inspirational, it's absolutely marvelous. And I want to commend you. And where you're doing it, hey, you get a blue ribbon. <laughs> Thank well, you for these thanks, moments on camera. Thanks. And yet... You know, like I say, I can take no credit for this. This dream was already in place long before I ever met Pam. I had the dream with. also that the, the fruitation, the seed was in your heart from your history, from your pain, from your seeking of a truth within yourself that was undenied. Well, that may be. Yes. I'll, 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 and, I'll accept that. Thank you. Not at all. We got you know, little, come over and see. Yeah. We got little kids for us. We're actually thinking of bringing in money by... No, you don't know yet. Be careful right here. That thing grew about a foot. This, is, this tree's still alive. It is? And she just wrapped it. Yeah, a little bit. See, it's on the top. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful tree. Oh, yeah. And a little thing. There's a little path that goes below there. We have a table over there. You do? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. A little thing. Yeah, we're working on it. It's not a huge cave, but... And the weeds just took over, but ladies are making Okay. Okay. Me on my ship, okay. Stop. You've got so much beauty here. Why miss you what you don't want? Okay. Tell me. Oh, that's a big, beautiful cat. That way. Well, you can jump walk around here. Walk? Okay. you got to fix that one. I know. I gotta get this one in my mask. See, this is what what we learned from our our rain. I know they're not. They're they're this year. What, huh? Oh, I was just telling her that this is what we do after the rain. We get to see what our our road. Oh yeah. Oh, we love it here. Okay, now since we're right here, we're gonna go check them over. Well, no, we 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 tried group one. There's a place. We, I, that's where I need to put that one bench, babe. Okay. Yeah. Me, look, you see, guys. When Kristen and Jeff came, we put together. That's so that, that piece. How that. totally sweet this is. We have been working over here. We'll get our oh, yes. Yep, there's a path that goes all the way up to the top. Really? So crawl for meditation and we, we like we we want people to be able to to breathe and to just 
be. Come and just be. You don't have to do anything, mm. just be. Just be. And so this is where Pam and I have been working on over here yeah. the past few days. We're going to have and a big get together drumming. And yeah. So I'm glad you're getting a chance to see it. Dad can be bored. He's stepped in the home. I'll watch the way. Oh, this is so pretty. It is. No way. It's a lightning struck pine oh, that kidding? we brought over here. Yeah. It's Pam's story. Uh, her and Martin, when they got kicked out of the religion, uh, Pam got kicked out. And Martin said, Can I come with you? <laughs> and so they left and they came up here and they were uh, July 4th. 1998? 98. And a uh, raging thunderstorm hit that tree. And. Um, so that represents my freedom. Oh, my Fourth gosh. of July. Wow. <laughs> oh, boy. I've, I've got we're some, gonna some of the band. pieces. We're, gonna, oh. we're going to make a nice bench out of it and stuff like that. Nice. So the past was literally struck down. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> oh yeah, this, the, we'll often watch big floods come down here. Uh -huh. Sit on the edge here. It's so powerful. I'm very fortunate to live here. It is extremely beautiful. Ten years ago, but he was commanded to turn this property in. Otherwise, I think Warren Jeff would have had a mansion up, built up here for him. And my husband and I refused. And <laughs> oh, you know, I'm, I'm, this is just really yeah. wonderful. I'm so glad to experience this with you, wow. to be here. Yeah. Because, you know, i got to be honest with you, I really felt like there was only a couple of freckles of safety left in the cell. Oh, we've got a bubble of... Yeah, now I'm understanding and I'm seeing that and, and it's like so wonderful after all these years to yeah. think that there's some place... You know, we couldn't walk out of the desert. I mean, I was out in Trout Creek, Joab County, 98 miles the closest store. You couldn't walk out. You couldn't escape. You weren't going anywhere. Right. Hey, yeah, where do you go? Run and, and now wherever you go, that there, there, you are, are. That there are people living here and have the courage to stay despite it all and reach out and hold reach their out. hand out in love to people and let them know that, hey, we, we understand. We've been there and done that, and we love you. Yes. That's what we're here for. So oh, very yeah. pretty. <laughs> I think my Warren is going to make the name better. <laughs> Another. Okay. Wow. And a college? See, I didn't get this before. I was just in Juab County, Utah. This is where we so all. We did by yeah. kind of the outskirts, so there's like trees. And so we did have some stuff on right Very, very pretty. Idea. Oh, yeah. how pretty is that? Yeah, I got that. <laughs> One year, Gordy planted the Anasazi corn and tomatoes. This looks, see that little place up there? Right. Looks just like a real Anasazi. Well, it is. Gordy goes. Gordy and my son Warren. Facing the red Wow. wow. Isn't that beautiful? beautiful? So you have the four corners, which is yep. yeah. east. Which is east? I don't know. Well, let's see. It doesn't probably matter. I don't know. Well, that's east. east. That's east. Wait, that's west. Oh, yeah. The sun comes out. Yeah. Right. The sun comes in the east. Oh, we did line those up. Yeah. 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 Ye
of that. But uh, well, you too. today we've got to increase. Uh, um, you will. Yeah. You will. We, we just love it. What else is, is it? What is left that you're not? Well, staples. We, you know, we, that's oh. what the lower field, the watering system there, and for a, a saw retrieval or a, or a vision flash, they could come here. And uh, this will be a, eventually. We have this all prepared for you know, camping or something yeah, that, you know, the weeds <laughs> popped up this last two weeks. How did pretty I this is. Uh, Pamson Warren did this one row here. And so uh, it's, it's definitely yeah. rain country. A lot of people don't like it because it's yeah. semi-cool in rain, but we don't have the bitter cold winters or the extremely hot summers. <laughs> 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 so what are the winters like here? Pretty mild. Mm -hmm. It does get cold. We it, we have a fig tree growing here. Two fig trees. Really? Yeah. They haven't fruited yet. Cold. It gets uh, pretty cold and snowy, but it's ten degrees cooler than St. George. St. George doesn't. Yeah. It's so desired. It's uh. Well, how do you do it? Is there some kind of? Yeah. Well, you you have to receive my blessing, and of course it will cost you a lot of money. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. All right. <laughs> At the time, he was working with the uh, troubled youth. Yeah. It's why it looks Indian. <laughs> and um, they have uh, they have energy. The whole the whole grid on this planet, and a lot of times people connect with that 